Classmates, today we will study actual model, focusing on the following issues. First, brief introduction. Second, the production possibility in two-factor Huxian only model. Third, choosing the mix of inputs both factor prices and the input choices. Fifth, factor prices and the good prices. Six, resources and output and the Lipkinski theorem. First, let's look at brief introduction. In the Ricardian model, competitive advantage could arise only because of international difference in labor productivity, which means different labor productivity is the only basis of international trade. However, in the real world, international trade could occur if countries have different resources. For example, it is well known that China has competitive advantage in labor intensive products because China has abundant labor. International trade is largely driven by difference in countries' resources. It's one of the most influential theory, international trade, which is often referred to as actual model. The theory is also known as factor proportion theory because the theory emphasizes interplay between the proportion in which different factors of production are available in different countries and the proportions in which they are used in producing different goods. Actual model is developed by two Swedish economists, Erling Heckscher and Bertil Olin. Heckscher is the teacher of Olin, and Olin received the Nobel Prize in economics in 1977 for his contribution to the theory of international trade. Second, the production possibility in two-factor Huxley Odin model. Next, let's look at how differences in resources generate a specific pattern of trade. Actual model sometimes is referred to as a two by two by two model. Two countries, two goods, two factors of, produ of production. So we will first describe the model of a two factor economy. Assume there are two countries, whom and the foreign, two goods, clothes and the food, two fact of production, labor and the capital, which is different from the specific factor model. Both clothes and food are produced using capital and labor. Actual model is like the specific fact model. There are more than one factor of production. So the production of possibility plant here is not a straight line, but bold. And the economy produces at the point that maximizes the value of a production. That is to say that the economy will produce at the point Q. Look at figure one. The point on the production possibility frontier that touches the highest possible ice value line. An ice value line is a line representing the constant value of a production. 
The value of the economy production is the following equation. Where PC and the PF are the prices of clothes and food, respectively. QC and the KF represent the quantities of clothes and food. At that point, the slope of the production possibility frontier is equal to minus PCLAPF, which also means the opportunity cost of clothes in terms of food is equal to the relative price of clothes. Third, choosing the mix of inputs. As we know, in a two-factor model, producers may have room of choices. In the use of inputs, a farmer, for example, can choose between using relatively more mechanized equipment capital and few workers, or vice versa. Thus, the farmer can choose how much labor and capital to use per unit of output produced. In each sector, then, producers will face not fixed input requirements, as in the Ricardian model, but trade off. What input choice will the producers actually make? It depends on the relative costs of capital and labor. If capital rental rates are high and the wages are low, farmers will choose to produce use relatively little capital and lots of labor. On the other hand, if the rental rates are low and the wages high, they will save on labor and they use a lot more capital. So we can see farmers face trade off. If W represents wage rate and R represents rental cost of capital, then the input choice will depend on the ratio of these two factor prices. W over R, look at figure two. False. Factor prices and the input choice. So there is a corresponding relationship between W over R and the, the label capital ratio, L over K used in the production, look at figure three. Y is for close production, CC. The another for food production, FF. If CC is shift out relative to FF, indicating that at any given relative factor prices, production of close we always use more labor relative to capital than real production of food. When that is true, we can say production of clothes is labor intensive, while production of food is capital intensive. Uh, please pay attention that the definition of intensity depends on the ratio of labor to capital used in production, not the ratio of labor or capital to output. Thus, a good cannot be both capital and labor intensive. The CC and the FF curves are called the relative factor demanded curves. They are very similar to the relative demand curve for foods the downward sloping characterizes the substitution effect. In the producer's factor demand, as wage W rises relative to land rate, uh, producers substitute capital for labor in the production decisions. Fifth, factor prices and goods prices. Suppose 
the economy produces both clothes and the food, then competition among producers in each sector mean ensure that price of each good equals its cost of production. The cost of producing a good depends on factory prices. If wage rises and other things equal, then the price of any good holds production uses label will also rise. How factor prices affect the cost of producing depends on how much of that factor that goods production involves. Food is a capital intensive product compared with clothes, for example. And then a rise in the wage will have less effect on the price of food than that of clothes. We can therefore conclude that there is one-to-one -one relationship between the ratio the wage rate to the rental rate WOR and the ratio of the price of clothes to that of food piece LAPF. The higher the relative cost of labor, the higher the relative PC of the labor intensive goods. The relationship is illustrated by upward slope curve SS look at figure four. Now we put SS curve and the relative factor demand curves together. Look at figure five. At first, we can find the supply link cage between PC LAPF and the ratio of labor to capital L over K used in the production of each good. Suppose if the relative price of clothes PC over PF WAP will rise to the level indicated by PC over PF2, the relative price of wage would also rise from W R1 to W R2. Because labor is low, it's relatively more expensive. The ratio of labor to capital employed in production of clothes and food would therefore drop LC KC1 to LC over KC2. And from LF over KF1 to LF over KF2 respectively. We can even learn one more important lesson from this diagram. We have known that increase of relative price of clothes will result in a rising of relative price of wage, which means that it raises the income of workers relative to that of capital owners. We can even could make a strong statement such a change in relative price will unambiguously raise the purchasing power of workers and lower the purchasing power of capital owner by rising real wage and lowering real rent in terms of both goods, which is known as stop servicing theorem. Why? When PC over PF increases, the ratio of labor to capital L over K falls in both clothes and the food production. In a competitive economy, factors of production are paid the marginal production, which means, for example, in clothes production, the real wages of workers in terms of clothes is equal to marginal productivity of labor when the ratio of labor to capital falls in producing either goods, the marginal product of labor in terms of that goods increase. Workers find they 
real wages higher in terms of both goods. On the other hand, the marginal product of capital falls in both industries. So capital owner find the real incomes lower in terms of both goods. Six, resources and output and the Lipkinski theorem at the last. We investigate how changes in resources affect the allocation of factors across sectors and the associated changes in output produced. Look at figure six. Suppose we take relative price of clothes, piece LAPF as given. Now we assume the economy label for clothes. The curve TT1 represents the economy production possibility frontier before the increase in labor supply. Output is at point one, where the slope of the production possibility frontier equal minus the relative price of close PCL or PF. And the economy produce QC1 and the QF1 of clothes and food. An increase of labor supply will lead to TT1 shift out to TT2, which means the economy can produce more of both clothes and food than before. The outward shift of the frontier is, however, much larger in the direction of clothes than food. We call it a bias expansion of production possibilities. In this case, the expansion is so strongly biased toward close production that at unchanged relative prices, production moves from point one to point two, which involves an actual fall in food output from QF1 to QF2, and a large increase in close output from QC1 to QC2. The bias effect of resources changes on production was pointed out by the Polish economist Lipkinski. It is therefore known as the Lipkinski effect or Lipkinski theorem. The bias effect of increase in sources on production possibility is the key to understanding how differences in resources given rise to international trade. An increase in supply of labor expense production probabilities disproportionately in the direction of close, while an increase in supply of capital expense then disproportionately in the direction of food production. Thus, an economy with high relative supply of labor to capital will be relatively better to producing clothes than an economy with low relative supply of labor to capital. So we come to a conclusion. An economy will tend to be relatively effective at producing goods that are intensive in the factors with which the country is relatively well endowed. That's all for this lecture. Thanks for your joining. See you next time.